Welcome back, panelists here, NBC News senior Washington correspondent Hallie Jackson. Mark Leibovich of The Atlantic, and he's author of the new book, Thank You for Your Servitude. We're going to get into it in a little bit. Rich Lowry's editor of National Review, and Daniela Gibbs Leger is the executive vice president of the Center for American Progress. And since the first half of our show was about sort of the hand wringing going on inside the Democratic Party, Daniela, I'll let you get first crack here, which is. Um, what is the issue at the White House? Are they not meeting the moment? Are expectations too high on the left? What say you? Maybe it's a little bit of both. Yeah. Um, look, I, it is a national pastime here in D.C. to talk about Democrats infighting. Mm-hmm. You know, I was using an analogy the other day. It's like... Dems in disarray, right? Dems in disarray, that a, exactly. That, yeah. that is totally yeah. a hashtag this town yeah. uh, thing to say. Speaking of this town, <laughs> exactly. right? just what he wanted to hear. Right. But it's like Democrats, we went out and bought a house and they're sitting outside arguing about what color to paint it. Meanwhile, the Republican Party is literally burning the house down to the ground. That is how I view this argument. Like, we, there are bigger fish to fry, mm-hmm. and what you need to be doing is being focused like a laser beam on November. Like, mm-hmm. that is what is most important in making sure the American people know there's a really big choice. Hallie, what are you hearing out of the White House? What, what is it that they're um, pushing back? Because I was on the phone with, with folks over there yesterday, ahead of the show, asking mm-hmm. about this exact thing. No, we're probably going to talk about it. And there is, I think there is a frustration, obviously. There's also a sense of, like, listen, we are doing stuff. People just don't see it necessarily, or people don't see how engaged the president is. It is not a shock to you, I'm sure, Chuck, that that's what the White House is saying in defense of President Biden. But on the flip side of things, I was speaking with a Democratic member of Congress who said, yeah, there is real frustration on a couple of fronts. First, you've got frontliners, right, the more moderate folks who are up in these races in the midterms who feel like he's got to be doing more on the economy. There's a sense that there's a good jobs report, out, objectively good jobs report out, right, on Friday. Why didn't the president do more to highlight it? He talked about it, yes. I think there were some people who wanted to see a more forceful response. On the other side, you have the progressives that are saying, abortion, guns, where are you on this, right? Yes. He did that event on reproductive rights just this past week. The president did. But there was a sense that I've heard from people Mm. of saying, where was this the day that the Supreme Court made the decision? Why aren't you doing X, Y, and Z? I think the White House response is, listen, we had things ready to go the day the decision came down. We're working on it. We've got our legal team doing it. It's not like they're hearing these suggestions and ignoring them. You know, there's an expression, politics abhors a vacuum. Well, guess who's seen this vacuum? It's Gavin Newsom. I want to play this ad that he's running in Florida. Freedom, it's under attack in your state. I urge all of you living in Florida to join the fight or join us in California where we still believe in freedom, freedom of speech, freedom to choose, freedom from hate, and the freedom to love. Don't let them take your freedom. Now, look, we can carve this up two ways, Mark. Look, Newsom is, uh, he joined Truth Social. He's trying to pick fights with Trump. He's, He's trying to pick a fight with DeSantis. But the messaging in there, was fascinating, and I think that's what you hear from Democrats. Yeah. Why isn't the White House? And this is when he says, where's the party? I think this was him saying, hey, guys, look, try this message. Exactly, and I think, you know, to be perfectly clear, I don't think Gavin Newsom cares about whether 10 people in Florida moved to California because right. they yeah. saw a bunch of ads. I mean, his message is to go national with these ads um, get as the he attention. is. Yeah. Get the right. attention of people, though. get the attention of the White House. And look, it's a compelling message. And Gavin Newsom, frankly, with all due respect to President Biden, delivers, delivers it a lot more compellingly than a guy who's been on the national stage for as long as the, you know, the current president is. So, look, I think it's very effective. I think it's, it's, it's a vacuum that is being filled. And I think, you know, this is probably a product of its own weakness from the White House. Now, Rich, we're going to get to the Republican leadership problems in the next block, but it does feel as if Republicans only will have themselves to blame if they can't counter this. Mm-hmm. Well, I think the Newsom thing, it's, it's just to promote himself and to get us chatting about but him. The freedom which message is, is, is a fascinating thing to try to reclaim that yeah, word. He's going to have to work really hard to reclaim that, given policy in California. But look, on Biden, I think there was this period of euphoria after the election where people kind of puffing him up into something that he wasn't. And now there's this period of existential despair when people are realizing what he actually is. He won presidency by default. He's nearly 80 years old in a hugely demanding job. And it's not as though he hasn't said, from my perspective, incredibly over the top things about guns and abortion and voting and everything people want him to rise to the moment on. It's just he's not very compelling or vigorous. And that's just who he is, and it's not going to get any better. Well, I will just say, as much as it relates to the 2024 chatter, I heard somebody said this to me, and I I think there's some validity to it, that the the single biggest thing that's going to stop this chatter about President Biden in 2024 is when and if Donald Trump announced he's running in 2024. Because there is nothing like that in the eyes of, I think, some folks that will solidify the Democratic Party around Joe Biden and put an end to the, like, Dems in disarray hashtag, at least temporarily. All right, but I want to play this ad, Daniela, that's in North Carolina. Cher Beasley 
uh, making it clear she doesn't want to be associated with either party. Take a listen. We all know Washington doesn't make a lot of sense. So why send the same politicians and expect it to change? The special interests have too much power, and neither political party is getting it right. I clearly, look, that's the only way she's going to get to 50% in that state. We know those last 5% of voters in North Carolina, that's up. Um, can Democrats succeed and distance themselves from Washington at the same time? Yes, they can, because it's politics are local. This is a local election about what's happening in North Carolina, and she needs to state clearly what she is going to do to deliver for the people in her state, how she will differentiate herself from what's happening in Washington, D.C. And again, this is a tale as old as time, people running away from the current occupant of the White House and focusing on how they're going to be independent right. and they're going to be different. And, and it, Joe when Biden does that ever not, work? It also never works. Yeah. Well, it but, never works. But, if but, the president know, said 38, it doesn't matter who never, you are or what you say. But we've also never had a Supreme Court deliver the, the type of decisions they deliver. We never had the attention around sure. gun violence happening. I think this is different than other midterm elections. Well, but also the face of the opposition party remains Donald Trump. I mean, exactly. you can go to the middle of the Charlotte airport in North Carolina and say, hey, there's going to be a rematch between Joe Biden and Donald Trump in two years. How do you feel about this? I guarantee you seven out of ten of them are going to say, oh, just like, you know, kill me now. I mean, it's just not, this is not an appealing message from the defining figures in both parties right now, which is why an ad like this is very effective, I think. The, I guess the other thing is, is, is there any way they change this narrative? You said it has to be Trump just has to announce. Is there any success they can have, or is, are, we, are we in a... This baked into November. Yeah, you mean short of that, basically. Yeah. I, I mean, I think Gina Romano is struck that she acknowledged to you pretty clearly that inflation is the reason why so many people are unhappy with the state of the country right now. And until, I think, there is... Yeah. What? What's that face? No, I just don't understand why they haven't. Been, <laughs> I don't get why they haven't done some of these small things. But this is why. This is. They I think you're hearing from members, holiday, from right? lawmakers, right? Yeah. Well, you asked her about that, right? And so, and I, but I, but I do think that that is to me when I have these conversations with the folks here, here who are lawmakers who are coming in and reflecting with our constituents say it's so much about the economy and inflation. It is about the Supreme Court decision, but I think there is still a question mark, yeah. at least for now, as to how much that's actually going to drive people to the polls. A lot of people say they will. You heard that in that opening piece. Yeah. But how much are you going to actually? Oh, that until we get to uh, last week, five percent of people is the top issue of abortion. Five percent. Well, we we will find out there. I don't understand. Some ideas to tackle inflation uh, are are too small to have an impact. Others are small, but let's see if it has an impact. I do. They don't seem to have the same story for every idea that's floated out there. Anyway. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.